Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. Today's guest is a singer, a songwriter, a producer. So many of the work that she's created, so many of the songs that she's created will have impacted your life. So many of them. She's won a Brit Award, an Ivan Novella Award. She has won a Grammy Award. She's got her first mini album, K1, coming out this week. Actually, by the time you hear it, it's out, so go and download it, but not until after you listen to this. And she's also had a baby this year. It's Camille! <laughs> I mean, you're a little bit busy. Do you know what? I don't know how I'm doing all of this. Like, I definitely feel like I'm about to faint and just <laughs> collapse on the floor. Even this morning, because it was so funny, you guys didn't see, I came down to the studio, didn't I? And I was pumping milk in a taxi on the way here and, like, reading through the notes of the interview. The milk went all over my leg and then I had to pour <laughs> the milk down the sink because I'm not going to be home till later. And I'm just like, how am I doing this it's all at one juggle. time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. But it was so nice to see you and your just lovely, beautiful face and you just comforted me so much. So I'm good. I'll be fine. It's all right. And we now know <laughs> next time, bring a little fridge bring bag, me. ice blocks, and I you didn't even have to know throw about away the milk. I didn't even know about that. I just found out you can get bags that you can keep your milk yes, chilled. Yes. Mums out there, working mums. <laughs> so anyway, I've learned anything. But Have thank you got you the so freezer much. milk bags though? I've got those that you put in the freezer, but I yeah. mean, at the moment I'm kind of, I'm doing both. So I'm breastfeeding and I'm pumping and I'm using a bit of formula. Yeah. But I don't feel like my supply is enough for my baby because he's so greedy. <laughs> so I feel like I'm just kind of pumping, but every two seconds I'm using a pump's bag anyway. So there's yeah, nothing really yeah. left in the fridge now anyway. Yeah, I used to... I used to love opening the fridge. All the milk used to go in the fridge door. Oh, in the freezer door, wonderful. sorry. Yeah, so seeing that, collecting. That made me so happy. Oh, it was, it was All the different good. shades and hues. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, is a, this is a hard day. My milk's a bit pale. <laughs> I love that for us. Do you know what's so crazy? Because my baby had a little, he had his injections the other day. He's four months. Oh. And I noticed when I pumped the milk, it was so like, God, it was like golden. Because apparently your body knows, right, when your baby needs extra yeah. milk. I find that insane. I showed my husband, this milk is literally bright yellow. And he was like, yeah, it's because you've got all the nutrients. I was like, oh, amazing. It's amazing, it's amazing what your amazing. body does, like instinctively. Yeah. It knows that your baby needs something yeah. else from you. It will create it. Definitely. We're actually incredible. I feel like a cow. I do oh, feel yeah. like a cow. Yeah, there yeah. is that aspect. But... You've got yeah. the LV pump. So I didn't have that until third pregnancy. Oh, my and, gosh. And honestly, so the third, with the third baby, I can remember um, seeing it and being like, I don't I don't need another pump. Like, <laughs> I've got my Medela. I don't need another yeah, pump at all. And then having to go to work and being like, well, actually, yeah. if I if I am going to keep working and, and being mobile, mm -hmm. maybe the LV's not a bad shout. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it completely changed my My only criticism... OK, so I've had... Two LV pumps. I've had mm. the, the one with the wires. Oh, yeah. And then I saw they had this wireless pump. Shout out LV because LV pumps are sick. However, my only criticism would be the wireless one has two lights on the top, which make you look like Tron. <laughs> so I was in the cinema the other day and I was like, OK, I'm going to bring my pump and pump while I'm watching the film. And literally the lights, I couldn't even use it. I was like... I was brighter than the freaking cinema screen. I'm like, why are there lights on this? It's meant to be discreet. So anyone who works at LV, can you please take me a look at the lights off. or turn the lights or give us an option to have the lights off? That's a good idea. Or put the lights on the inside, maybe. Or we know we don't need to know the lights that are even there. We know that the pump's on. We can feel it. Do yeah, you know what I mean? True. Just turn the lights off. That's true. Yeah. That's or true. when you're, it's like 3 a.m. at night and I'm pumping, like the whole light is, the whole room is lit up <laughs> like a disco. I'm like, no. Nah. I just felt, with things like that though, I I am um, I was amazed the last time that you have something like that that's super high tech and cost, yeah. uncostly. Yeah. But on the other side of it, I remember having a hacker, which is essentially a, a, a silicone thing I you had just one of those. put on and it sucks all the It really up. hurt though. Did it? The suction's so hard it's on a very, hacker. It's a very strong suction. But if you're I'm um, struggling with your supply, it is useful to have that because then you yeah. can just make sure you're collecting every drop of liquid gold that I comes mean, from your nipple. The fact that you just oh had to throw my... milk away, we both felt that pain. We started this day. With, it was it was heartbreaking, <laughs> guys. I literally, and I feel like I pumped about a pint of milk just now. And I threw it all down the, the toilet. So that was a sad moment for me. Catherine Jenkins, when she was on years and years ago, we were talking about the milk after a night out. Oh my you've had a bit god! Of drink. Yeah. So she said that there were these little, um, almost like they reminded me. The way she was describing them re reminded me of like a science experiment at school. <laughs> you'd essentially stick this little piece of paper into your milk, and it like would litmus. tell you. Was yeah, it litmus? It would tell you if the, if it was a good good to go or not. Oh so if there's god. alcohol in it, obviously not. But if it's not, you're fine. 
it's just we can't even have a drink in peace, can we, ladies? It's very difficult. It's Without very the toilets, difficult. I've hung over to you try can't. and You have to think about so many things. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm really understanding what it means to be a mum. And every time I'm around mums, I'm like just trying to get all the knowledge. Like even what you just the thing you just told me today about the fridge pack, I will never <laughs> forget that. I'm so grateful for you sharing that with me. <laughs> and it's just about being around other mums who are just gonna share the knowledge because we all don't know what we're doing. We're all no, learning we on the don't. job, aren't we? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you were doing it whilst promoting your new video. <laughs> <mini-album. laughs> Am I okay? (laughs) Am I all right? Why did I do this? I didn't know it was going to be so at the same time. I really didn't. Like, people must think I'm actually crazy. I just made an album. It started when I actually started when I had loads of morning sickness. I was really sick and I was at home a lot. And I'm used to being in the studio making a lot of music. And I couldn't be because I was so sick. So I was just stuck in my studio at home. And I was like, right, I've got to. I've got to do something. And I started making these songs. The first one being a song called Muscle Memory, which my management then sneakily sent to Nile Rogers <laughs> when I wasn't expecting it. And then I remember one day they texted me and they were like, so Camille, um, Nile Rogers wants to be on your song. He said, yes. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> I, I was didn't like, ask you, him. Like, I didn't, literally. <laughs> I know him really well, but I would yeah. never have thought, oh my God, go and text Nile, Nile Rogers, ask if he wants to be on it. And he said, yeah. So... It kind of came from that. And then I just was tinkering around for like the next three months after that. So I was probably between like my, I don't know, month three and six of my pregnancy, just in the studio at home going <laughs> with my belly and the kicks and everything. I wrote a song about my son as well called The Sun, which is on the album. And then it turned into this thing. And then I was like, do you know what? I want to I want to release it. I want to go. I think that actually has come from, though, my determination to prove to myself that I can be a woman who has a baby and still has a career. Because yeah. I think in the industry, in the, in the music industry, there's always this chatter about, oh, she's having a baby, she's going to be out for a few years and we'll wait till she gets back in a few years. I'm mm. like, what? Like, why are we on pause because yeah. we have a baby? If, if we want to be on pause, fantastic. But if we don't, why should we have to be? So, yeah, I just thought, I'm going to do what I'm doing. I'm still going to put out my music I'm at home most of the time anyway. I'm just going to put up a TikTok or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And make my music as I do it. And here I am. And now I've actually got to go and promote it. So jokes <laughs> on me. Because the music's actually doing quite well. But it's fascinating that, that this has come at a time where you're, you're basically stepping... I would say you're stepping forward. This yeah. is you. you yeah. know, so many people know your work. 10 billion streams. Oh, my God. 10 billion streams. That's oh my God, insane. Is it? I didn't even know that. Wow. So do you know that so many people know of your work, but don't necessarily know the lady behind it. I know. You know what I mean. So it's interesting that you've decided to step forward and kind of go, "Well, this is me, and this yeah. is my music that I would love to do." Well, yeah. Well, at the same time as becoming a mum. Oh God, the timing is crazy. I mean, I've always wanted to be but an in artist. Terms of like birthing, like yeah, birthing, becoming a mum, birthing, a, you know, birthing, yeah. a baby, you know, all that. I stuff. birthed a baby and I birthed an album at the same time. I mean, it's been a year of birth. <laughs> I love that. I love it. I've always wanted to be. I just feel like it wasn't the right time before and also I feel like a lot of maybe the industry didn't see me as an artist I think they kind of maybe wanted me to stay in this box as a writer and that was cool and I love that I love being a writer but there's so much more to me so I'm getting to show that now which is really nice I absolutely love that. Yeah. I'm happy. What was your childhood like? I had a really fun childhood. I was such a tomboy. I was such a geek, a nerd. I loved math, science, physics. I was always at home doing like weird experiments. And my mum got me a telescope once and I was looking up at Mars most nights and riding my bike and rollerblades. And and then it shifted into me being this complete like Britney fan and being a super girl girl. I don't know when that shift happened one day. It was really weird. Um, but I mean, I've always still maintained that love for like science. I don't know why I'm such a science geek. It's always been that way. But my childhood was amazing. I had two incredible parents. And even though they divorced and separated when I was about maybe 13, they still were such close friends and they maintained a really good friendship despite any differences they had. And I remember thinking that is an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially now being an adult, I can look back and think, how the hell do they do that? You know? But, I mean, it meant that my childhood was still super safe and happy and I was well-adjusted and I remember just thinking, oh, I'm getting two presents at Christmas instead of one. That was my life. So I don't clearly remember the divorce apart from the gift. And, yeah, I just... I had a good time. I've got an older sister, an older brother, and I just wanted to be around them all the time. And I was studying really hard at school. I definitely was a straight-A student. (laughs) I actually was. I'm very smart. A lot of people don't know how smart I am. I'm extremely smart, guys. Like, 
I am really, really smart. <laughs> I was in like the top percentile of the country for my GCSEs, actually. Really? I was. <laughs> so I was studying loads because my mum was super big on education. Yeah. So she would always make sure I'd done my homework and that I'd done extra work. I remember when I was doing my GCSE exams, I was like doing a past paper every every single night. I was like, I need another past paper because I just wanted to ace my exams. And that's the kind of person I was young. I was just always wanting to do well in school. I guess studious and just trying to very, absorb as much information as possible. Very much so. And I remember also at the same time this love for music and I would look at all my sister's CD covers. Yeah. And you know at the back where they've got like... Who wrote the song? All the thank yous. Like Mariah Carey would be like, thank you to Jojo Schmojo and Bobo Bobo for this album. And I'd be like, who are these people? I want to meet them. Yeah. <laughs> or I, wanted, I wanted to be them in a way. And I would always see Pharrell's name. Yeah. Pharrell was across everything. I don't know if anyone knows how prolific Pharrell is. He's like one of the most prolific music makers of all time. He's making music before you probably even alive. Because I believe he's a vampire. I think he looks so good that I don't understand how he still looks this good. He's a vampire. Yeah. So he's probably been alive for the last hundred years making music. But, I mean, I would always see his name and I just wanted to be like him. And then I remember having that love for music as well. So it kind of all came around at the same time. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you were a stockbroker. I You really became a stockbroker. So I all did. of that... I hate telling this story because I feel like I'm literally advocating people to walk out of their job. Like, I'm really not. I mean, I just walked out of my stockbroking role because I... It wasn't giving me the satisfaction I really wanted. And I should have thought about a plan B before I did that, which is what I'll say to you now as, a, as an adult and parent. But at the time, I thought, bye, bye, y'all, I'm going. And I just, I was happy leaving the job yeah. because it, I felt free when I left. And I would hang around at this studio and I would, like, go there every day and be like, what are they doing? And one day I started tinkering around, like, on a piano and writing stuff, and they thought I was quite good. And I remember writing this song one time and I was just going, oh, why are we waiting so long on so far? It was just so silly what I was singing at the time. And I turned it into this thing and it ended up being a song called What About Us? And then my manager, who is my manager now, he wasn't at the time, but he would come and visit the studio, heard that song, pitched it to a record label. And then it went to the Saturdays and it was a song called What About Us with Shana Pal. And that song went to number one. That is literally how I started <laughs> my career in music. Like... And here I am, like, 12 years later. But, I mean, there is work that goes into that. I yeah. mean, I, I know growing up, we used to hear all the stories of, like, someone walking down the street and, you know, just someone overhearing someone with their headphones on and being like, yeah. oh, my God, you should, you should be signed, you know, you should... Right. But this, you worked to get to I that. Did. You know, I, I think we can often be quite flippant about, like, oh, you're true. just mucking around, but actually... You worked yeah. really hard. To I get did. To that. That's true. I did work. Everyone knows I worked so hard. I worked so hard. I'm always in the studio. And I remember after that number one, I, I just felt so scared that I, was, I needed another one. It feels like a fluke, right? It feels like a fluke. And then you feel like you have to prove to the whole industry. Because mm. there were all these like whispers like, who's this Camille girl? <laughs> I was like, okay, I need to really prove that I can write. And then I just kept writing and writing. And my management put me in touch with Simon Cowell. I worked on The X Factor for two years as a coachy kind of person yeah. and I'd help him choose songs for the artist. And, <laughs> and then I kind of got into working with Little Mix. That's how that all started. And it's never been the same. I've written 32 songs for them, I think. Oh, my God. And we've had two number ones. I had Black Magic, shout out to my ex. A lot of them, a lot of the songs we did together. Oof. <laughs> It's been a lot. It's absolutely incredible. It's been amazing. So in, during your childhood, at any point, did you look for, look ahead to the future and think about motherhood? Yeah, I always dreamt of having like a really, you know, big family. And I always dreamt that I'd have like the perfect husband and all that kind of stuff that you do when you're a girl. Yeah. Never, never any of the bad things, just all the good sides of a perfect man is what I wanted. And I did dream about that, yeah, but I mean... It got to the point where I was so career driven as well. I kind of thought it wouldn't happen. Really? Yeah. Because I kept meeting bad guys and I kept thinking, oh, no, it's just not going to be for me. I'm going to be that lonely old lady at 80s from here writing songs in the studio without a husband or a family. And I did think that was going to be me until I slid into the DMs. Did you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it about Tommy that made you all? I just thought he was so hot. Like, I remember looking, because it's funny, his profile, you know when you go on your Discover page, it yeah. kept coming on my Discover page. I was like, who, who is this guy? 
And then one day I remember just thought, oh, let me just look and see who he is. And I thought, mm, he's really good looking. But I loved his personality. Like right. he was so funny and silly. And on his page, he'd be doing silly stuff all the time. And I thought, oh, he's like me because I'm an actual fool. And so I remember one day I thought, let me just say something. And he was getting a plaque for one of his songs. He's a musician as well. And I messaged him and I said, congratulations. That's it. That's all. <laughs> right. This is how I said. Everyone thinks I was this creep going, what's your name? What's your age? I literally just said, congratulations. And he was like, oh, thank you. And then we just got talking. But it was me that slid. It was a friendly slide. But also, the algorithms get so much jib. Mm -hmm. But the algorithm brought you together. 100% the algorithm. I have to thank, even though I usually hate algorithms. Yeah. If it wasn't for the algorithm, I wouldn't have my family right now. And I also love being able to say to Tommy that if it wasn't for me, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> That's so if true. If it wasn't for me, because he probably wouldn't message me, because he said he, you know, he doesn't really message people like that. So I hope he doesn't anyway. <laughs> no, um, no, no. <laughs> but he must be, he must be like quite a, not an impulsive person, but someone who just go, like, right, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this job because I'm not happy. I'm gonna message this guy. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm not... very impulsive. Yeah, I am very. If I want something, I want it now. Usually, mm. I do feel sorry for my management because I'm literally like, I want to do, <laughs> to perform at the Grammys tomorrow, and they're like, okay, Camille. <laughs> but I do have big dreams. I do want things immediately, and I tend to try and make them happen myself a lot of the time if no yeah. one else can. I don't like waiting around for people. So, like, for example, with this album, K1, when I started realising it was an album, I was like, right, I'm just going to do it on my own because I haven't got time to go to the studio and wait yeah. for Shmelly and Shmelly and Deli to make the album with me. I'm just going to do it on my own, and I did it. So now I've got a lot of confidence that I can do that again. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. So meeting um, Tommy, mm. at what point did you talk about the future and kids? <gasps> or did you? We did. And it was Tommy. OK, so Tommy is a very intentional person. Right. I was very lucky with Tommy. I know not a lot of men are like that, but very early on, Tommy said, and we have the WhatsApps to prove it, actually. He said to me, this is what's going to happen. You're, you're going to be my girlfriend. Then we're going to get married. Then we're going to have kids. And we're going to have the happiest life. He literally said that maybe like a week in. No. I swear to you. And I was like, I was all... I was all <laughs> Giddy in the first place. I was. You know those long like The phone calls that last all night. It was one of those ones. And he WhatsApped me after the phone call. And I was like, oh my God, he's not to say it to me. And then look, here we are. But he said he knew instantly I was the one. Which really? Is really sweet. I understand why. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the ring. You got married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never taking this off. No, honestly, I'm so happy and so in love with him. He yeah. is probably one of the best humans in existence. Like, I can't express how much he makes me happy. And we laugh all day. All we do is just, you know, dance to Drake and we figure out what we're going to eat for dinner. That's literally what our marriage consists of. And are you both, is he still doing music now as well? He are you is. both in the studio at home? We're both watched? in the studio, but he has turned into this famous TikToker now. Oh. Because, again, like me, he kind of wasn't feeling music as much yeah. at the time. In his life, that was his thing he wasn't feeling. And he thought, I love cars. I want to talk about cars. I'm like, I remember the day going, all right, babe, just do it. Why don't you go on TikTok and start talking about cars? That was maybe a year and a half ago. And now he's got like over 300,000 followers. <laughs> and he's, we go out to eat and people will literally come up to him, okay, and go, Tommy, oh my God, Tommy. And they'll push me aside and ask me to take a photo. And I'm like... How did this happen? <laughs> He's so famous. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so proud of him because he used to hate TikTok. And yeah. I was the one, when everyone was dancing on TikTok, like, <laughs> that was me about three years ago. And he was like, what are you doing? And now he is the king of TikTok. Car, car talk, as they call it. He's like... Car talk. Car talk. Wow. Yeah. That's my something new that I've learned today. Oh, my God. But, I mean, he still obviously is incredible productions. When I'm in the studio, if I can't do something or I'm stuck, he'll be... Because he can mix really well, which right. means he knows, understands levels and yeah. sound. And he studied it. So he's really, really good at that. So he will help me sometimes when I beg him to come in the studio when he's not TikToking. <laughs> <laughs> he can come and help me. But, yeah, it's nice that he gets the industry yeah. gets how hard it is so I can moan to him about stuff and he's always there to lift me up and encourage me he's the best when it comes to the industry and uh, and having a baby mm. did you have to factor in what, what, what did were you worried about timing yeah about take, you know all those things that we're told like you're going to go away for a few years mm -hmm. you know all of that stuff yeah you know how did you juggle that and how did you oh my god 
I don't actually know how. I just remember giving birth and then being here. <laughs> Seriously, I'm, tr- I'm just. Even the other day, I had to do this and think, how did this all happen? I remember saying to my management, I didn't want to stop, and I remember fighting them, and they were like, Camille, you're going to have to. So stop. was that your attitude before you got pregnant? Yeah. As well? Right. Yeah, 100. percent Because I'd made the album and I wanted it to come out this year. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not waiting another year for this to come out because I'll be on K2, K100 by then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is K1 well, has come out. Because also the thing, isn't it? I think, you know, being married to a musician is that thing where they you pour so much into something and then by the time everyone actually hears it, you're already, you you're moved on. It. You're yeah. over it. That must annoy him so much. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I remember just fighting them on it. My management are so caring that they were just like, Camille, you can have a year off if you want. You've earned all the time off in the world. You work so hard. And I was like, no, I want to put it out. And I thought to myself, there's ways of doing this without having to be too labour intensive. Like you can promote an album from home. I've been at home a lot. Yeah. I've done interviews over Zoom. Like I've doing, done TikToks and production is a very home based thing anyway for me. So it hasn't been as hard as everyone probably thinks. Yeah. But there are days when I'm like, oh my God, like today, for example, I'm doing a lot of interviews and I'm pumping and I'm thinking about the baby and I'm, it's a lot. It is yeah. a lot on your brain. Yeah. But it helps when I'm around lovely people like you who understand and I can feel really safe to talk about it. Oh, bless you. Yeah. It's not easy. How was it when you found out you were pregnant? <gasps> it was so amazing. Okay. Did you have any symptoms oh. or anything? I had a bit of, a tiny bit of sickness, but it just felt like normal time of the month kind right. of stuff. It wasn't like, oh my God, am I pregnant? But I remember we had kind of said, let's come off the pill for a bit. Just because I was getting annoyed with taking it. I was forgetting to take it. You know how it is. That old chestnut you've got to take every day and you bloody forget every day, don't you? (laughs) How do we forget when it's something that we literally have been taking for years? It's because we don't want to. It's very true. And it's not fair that we have to do it. It should be the man that has to do it, Mm -hmm. I think. It's just not fair. It's another thing that women have to do on our yeah. list. So I think that's why sometimes we're just like, ugh. Mm. Um, but I mean, I remember coming off the pill and then I remember it happening very quickly after that. And then I remember I was at a concert with my friend. So that night I went to a concert at the O2 to see, who was I seeing? Lil Bow Wow and Amarian. Wow. And we were like, and I remember feeling in the concert, oh, I feel a bit periody. Yeah. <laughs> so I, was, I remember feeling a bit like that. And she was like, all right, don't worry, we'll go home after this song, whatever. So I went home early. And then I went home and I was talking to Tommy and we were just like, should we take a test? And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And then when I took the test, I went in the bathroom and I read on the stick and everything. And then I saw the line and the, the feeling on my face of it was like shock, happiness, fear. It's like a, a wave of, isn't it? Of yeah. like you get hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I'm pregnant. And I called and I went, Tommy. And I remember, I think we were both even naked, literally <laughs> dancing around because we just literally been in the bed. We're just running around the room with my bum out, with this stick in my hand. <laughs> and then I remember we um and we FaceTimed both our mums. Oh. And they were screaming. And I said, "Don't tell the rest of the family. We'll tell them when we tell them." But it was just a beautiful moment. That I was, love oh, that. Beautiful. And then how was the pregnancy? My pregnancy, I have to say, was a really, really smooth one. Apart from, like, I had a couple of, like, little infections that happened. Because I don't know if people know, when you're pregnant, you're prone to, like, all these weird... Every other day, there'll be some kind of issue Mm. that you have to go into the hospital for. So I definitely was in and out of hospital quite a lot. But I made really good friends with my midwives. They are the best. Shout out to my midwives. I know you're probably... Because we all talk all all the time. (laughs) Um, Still now. Um, but my pregnancy was definitely overall smooth, apart from those infections that I said, and I got everything really quickly. And yeah, it was a beautiful pregnancy. Like my baby was always kicking. Oh. I did get one of those Dopplers though. Oh, that, did you walk for home? Yeah, but they say you're not meant to do that. I mm. think you're not really. I don't. I wouldn't advocate that, guys. But because well, people get quite obsessive, don't they? And then if they can't hear anything, that was me. Really, every day I was. Tommy would wake up and just hear. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'd have this thing on my stomach. Because I just wanted to check that he was all right. Yeah. So some days it, that was really reassuring. Other days when I couldn't hear it, I'd be really upset. But my pregnancy was good. I can't lie. It was the birth. Well, so how did you feel <laughs> going towards it? You know, did were you fearful of it anyway? Were you somebody who watched one every shook. minute all the time? I did. Shook. Okay. So I was shook if. I've always been scared of birth. Right. Because I'm like, how on earth is your vagina meant to do that? How? Mm-hmm. And because I'd seen that, I got this um, epino thing. Yes, epino, yes, right. yes. 
I got the Epino, which is like a balloon that goes in your vag. You pump it up. Um, and it's meant to like show your stretch vagina, it. Yeah. stretch it, show your vagina. Look, this is what we're going to be doing soon. So it's, it's not. It's like kind of working the muscle, isn't it? Kind it's of working going, your perineal, like, okay, yeah. perineal areas and whatever exactly, and letting your vagina know we're gonna we're gonna go into labour soon, guys. So let's get our shit together, that kind of thing. And which I remember, feels so weird when you're doing it, and also because you've got to get it in around your bump. Like exactly. <laughs> How, How are you meant to do that, please? <laughs> Thank you. This is my. I'm so glad that you. That was also my thing when you go to hospital and you have to pee in a cup. You're like, hey! I can't even sit like I get if it's or gets shave. In. I gave up on shaving <laughs> at the end, but then I remember just before the birth, I was like, I need to shave. It's getting ridiculous. <laughs> so I remember that took about three hours before the birth, <laughs> trying to shave. But yeah, this epino thing saved me, guys, because literally it would like get me used to it even though when I'd take it out I'd see I'd, it only inflated to like this much mm. and I'd feel like it was like <laughs> a balloon inside <laughs> literally. me literally <laughs> but yeah it did get me ready for the birth a lot better and then but I was so scared I was so scared yeah. of the birth I did NCT classes, which really helped. Yeah, did that? How, what was that like? Because obviously you met people in the area as well. Did met people in the area. All the other couples were in a WhatsApp group now, which is really cute. We all still chat, but I mean, it was nice being able to share the fear with them because yeah. they were all equally just as shook. Like if all the mothers in there would be like, oh, "What the hell are we about to do?" Because you do feel yourself advancing towards this thing that you know is going to come. And you don't know what kind of birth. Is it going to be a C-section? Is it going to be a natural? What kind of help will I have? Will will my baby be pulled out with forceps? It's Mm -hmm. just crazy, all these things. Did you have, like, a plan or anything like that? Right. This was my plan, which they said to me, there's no point planning anything, babe. But I was like, no, no. I want a water birth. I want all these things. I want music and lights. And Because the NCT woman was like you can make your room whatever you want mm. did you know i didn't know that mm. so i brought a suitcase of fairy lights i had i had the phillips hue <laughs> i brought it all to the fucking hospital <laughs> and when i got there funnily enough when i got there the pain was just too much for me i said give me an epidural immediately really <laughs> i said immediately they were like are you sure because it means you can't have a water birth i said a water birth <laughs> Right, this is ridiculous. What is going on here? Well, how far in were you at that point as well? Oh my god, okay. So, I my waters had broken that morning, and me and Tommy were all like, Oh, this is cute. I don't have any pain. Oh, let's literally go down to the hospital. It's so the the, the, <laughs> the way it changes, the way that first comes in, you know, oh. and so many people were like, Well, this is what, what, what people are talking about. This is a contraction. I can, I can deal, babe. I <laughs> thought I was on cloud nine. I was like, This is going to be a breeze. I don't know why I was worried. I was like, we just skipped down to the hospital all nicely with our bags and there were, you know, birds chirping in the trees and stuff. When I stepped, By the time I stepped into that hospital room, I was like, what is going on? So anyway, I asked for the epidural, but guess what happened? So got the epidural now, everything felt great. But then I noticed I could only feel the pain relief on one side. Oh. So my epidural localised, which is when it doesn't spread, it doesn't spread to where it needs to go yeah, across yeah, your body. Yeah. And I was like, guys... I can still feel the worst intense pain, like because it does feel like you're gonna die. You've got a baby coming out of your vagina. It does. It's not, you know, it's, I won't there's lie. something coming out of you. Yeah, it does. And, yeah, and also the way that it moves your hips and everything, and it, and, it, and although your body is designed to do that, yeah, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna be painful. Exactly, you know? it's so painful, and it just, do you know, for me it was as well. I couldn't process how quickly the contractions were coming. I thought yeah. that you'd have a lot more time to recover. It was like. It was happening so fast. Yeah. So anyway, I had got a second epidural because I was like, I can't take this. Please, no, the second one. So they came to the second one, but my back, I'm curved over because obviously mm. to get an epidural, you have to have an injection in your spine, right? Oh. And I was curved over and you can't move, but then I'm still having these... Con- thank you. That reaction. <laughs> I'm still having the contractions, y'all, because the first ones didn't work. So now I'm like this, having to stay still through contractions, like curved like this, look. And then that happened, and then I remember going, oh, my God, what's going on? My midwife was like, at this point, okay, we need to just see what's going on with you. When she checked, I had gone from a dilation of 2 to 10 in an hour. Oh, my gosh. So she was like, come on, your baby's coming, you're going to have to push. I said, what? I've just got here. The birds were chirping. What's going on? (laughs) She's like, you're going to start pushing. So he came in about two, an hour and a half. I swear to God, it was the quickest birth. He just said, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. That's incredible. But I was overdue, to be fair. I was a week overdue. So right. At that point, Do you think... Like, did you look into hypnobirthing or anything like that? 
I did hypnobirthing. Oh, you did? Oh, my God, how can I forget? <laughs> <laughs> I did hypno- Shout out Jade, my hypnobirthing lady. I love you so much. If she's listening to this, I hope she's listening. I'm loving all your shout outs. Babe, <laughs> hypnobirthing is lit. It changed everything for me. And even actually, I know we were talking about pain, but even with that stuff, for me, yeah. third birth, I forgot to breathe. Forgot to breathe. Oh, I think there were so many look. different things going on. My, my, my second child had split his head open. I think my breath was somewhere else. Yeah. As soon as I remembered... Oh no, you've got to breathe. You've got to breathe. It totally changed it. It does. It does. You know all those films you see where they're like, Whew. you yeah. actually do need to do that stuff. And the hypnobirthing, it gives you everything you need to know about how you're going to get through this mm. pain. And also, I find it really helpful for your birthing partner because they are in the hypnobirthing classes with you. So they can remind you. Mm-hmm. keep your jaw low and relax for example or yeah. what positions are going to be good for you and all that kind of stuff anyway it was sick that uh, that for me of all the things I did was probably the most useful thing yeah. was hypnobirth uh, and also it's a lovely thing I think to do during the, the pregnancy yeah it, it's a nice thing for you to be able to do together it your is partners or whoever your birthing partner yeah feel involved, my mum and my husband connected. did it yeah 100% they were all in the room because she used to come over to the house and do it it was really nice really? we'd all sit there have a nice like cup of something warm and we'd be like Whew. <laughs> together and play music and all that it's the affirmations yeah. for me there's this affirmation um mp3 that she gave me and you listen to it at night and it's like i am strong <laughs> all these kind of beautiful things and one thing that it said on there which was so amazing was it was talking about contractions like the contractions are your body so it's not going to yeah. overpower you are you that it's your you. body it's yeah. you so you can do it and that did help me a lot yeah Absolutely. Yeah. How did you feel holding your baby in your arms? No, I was just looking at the pictures of it the other day because I made a photo book. <laughs> it was the most incredible feeling. Like he was literally slapped onto my chest. And I remember being like, oh my God. And he was like, he wasn't crying loads, but he was like whimpering because he was cold, obviously. Yeah. So they, I had him like this and I was like, going to worry don't worry it's okay it's like I love you I love you and then he just went straight on the breasts oh wow <laughs> he's like F this bye <laughs> he's so greedy <laughs> he's so greedy from I should have known from then what I was in for but did you know you were having a boy I knew I was having a boy I found out we found out the sex yeah because we thought I need to we need to get a hold on the situation yeah I really respect the parents that don't find out and keep the secret because I can't keep I wouldn't be able to wait that long did you find out each no. time? See, how did you do that? Well, well the third time, though, we, we when they said, do you want to find out, me and Tom did look at each other and go, do we? Oh and we were God. like, no, we didn't. But that was the time that we almost were tempted. But how did you find oh out? And did you do, like, a reveal or anything like that? We didn't do a reveal. For some reason, Tommy is so against these reveals, like the really extra ones that I I've love. Se- but I've seen some reactions of people and you're like... Oh. OK, yeah, it's a bit cringe when you don't, you're not happy. Yeah. But he just <laughs> hates... <laughs> also, if that is your reaction, <laughs> please don't post it's it. Like... <laughs> Why would you post that? But, I mean, Tommy's a really... He wasn't here for this whole pop in a popper and blah, like he just <laughs> didn't want to do that and that's all I wanted to do was pop the popper Aww. so I had a really dry reveal like it was just me and Tommy and we would like to be fair it wasn't dry it was beautiful but we didn't do any of the fun stuff that I wanted to do <laughs> <laughs> it had to be super chill for Tommy so what did you do we told our parents and we told our families like one by one and just watched so their reactions. So did you just find out in the, in the we scam? We found out in the scam. We went to one of those like, you know, the private scams, like yeah. I think it was window to the room we went to and we did like a, a little find out thing there and we were just crying together because I really wanted a boy. Really? I did want a son, yeah. I really wanted a, first I wanted a boy, but I would have been so happy with a girl yeah. also. And now, I mean, if I have another one, I would love a girl. It's just how it goes, isn't it? Yeah. I feel like I'm going to end up with like a hundred boys. Do you? I feel like that's what God wants to do. I've got three. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's amazing, but wow, you are a queen. A I mean, queen. it's just a lot of energy. So much energy. And, you know, for me, the most interesting thing has been like the weeing in the face. He weed in my mouth the other day. Yes. He did wee in my mouth. So, it's because they're cold. <laughs> so, if <laughs> you put a is? flannel, yeah, if you put a flannel over their bits, it stops them, I stops them know. weeing on you. Yeah. I mean, it's t- I think I was on. Oh. A child by the time I worked that out, Babe. but I mean, I, otherwise I would say ninety percent of uh, nappy changes I would get. They would wee, wee yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. He weeded my mouth. <laughs> he did wee my mouth. He did. He, I fully accept that happened. Oh my gosh, he's oh so cute gosh. though. He's so cute. 
But what was it like that that first chunk of time, like leaving the hospital and going home? Mm. You put a gorgeous video of Tommy like walking oh, through the house. Oh no, my god, you saw it. We were just so scared because do you know what it was? Because the birth went as much as that short story was a bit traumatic because it was such a quick and happy, healthy yeah. birth, and everything went really well. I thought I'd be in there for like a week, so I packed enough to like <laughs> have to go to New York and back. Do you know what I mean? Suitcase. Babe, I had a whole a massive suitcase. Like I'm talking a full 32 kg suitcase of stuff. <laughs> and they were like, right, you can go home now. I mean, Tommy were like, <laughs> but I haven't even eaten my snacks. We're not ready. <laughs> I literally hadn't eaten snacks. I literally had not eaten snacks. I warmed up my food, and they're like, yeah, you can go home tomorrow. And in the morning, we went home, and it just feel like, are you guys sure you want to allow us to walk out of here with this child? Because they are so chill about you just walking out with the baby. <laughs> And me and Tommy just didn't feel ready at all. So we packed him in this, you know, in the car and everything. And it was raining. I remember it just started heavily raining. And I was like, oh, my God, the rain's going to touch him. Something might happen to him. <laughs> and we were so worried. And then we got him home. And I remember we walked over the front door with this baby. And I just remember thinking, oh, my God, this is incredible. And he was just looking around the house and looking at us and... It was a beautiful moment. I'll never forget that moment of my son coming home. Yeah. And Tommy just felt so proud. Like, he proper took that role of a dad straight away. He was incredible. Did the house feel different with him in it? Yeah, it felt like a home immediately. It felt like a home. Everything made sense. Because me and Tommy just been tinkering around in this house. Yeah. And I don't know why we decided to get such a big house together, but we were just so extra. We were like, we're not living in Surrey. Yeah, let's live the life. <laughs> but, I mean, the house was made a home when... Our baby came home. Yeah, he's he's just the best. It makes life feel real and feel fulfilled. It really does. You posted a video about six days after birth, I think it was, or six days after, a week after bringing him home. Uh, and you were both so happy. Mm. And, uh, and I can remember in the, in the comments, uh, in your sort of copy part, the caption, yeah. you'd written, um, one thing I've realised is that... Uh, don't believe every pe other people when they say, you know, <sighs> you know, all the negativity that might come at you. Like you were saying yeah. about the sleep, get all the sleep yeah. and all that stuff. Oh, shut you like, up. You were just sort of like, actually, oh. we're, we're fine and we don't have to listen to other people, you know, and yeah. it's, it's, you, you'll be okay, essentially. If that is the one thing I've learned is to not listen to anyone who tells you anything. Yeah. Even if it's someone you love, they're all, and everyone's going to tell you stuff from their experience, their yeah. fears their issues like mm -hmm. for me example I could go and say to someone now don't get an epidural but I mean it's fine if you get an epidural so I wouldn't say that to you and I've learned just to not listen to people because your experience will be absolutely fine being a parent is really not that hard it's just not I can't sit here and go because you'll you'll find a way yeah. you actually do find a way you're still alive we're still here doing it mm -hmm. aren't we we're fine we're still alive <laughs> I only just heard one from months ago and I'm here doing an interview do you know what I mean <laughs> so like it's you it's doable and I wish I never listened to everyone going oh make sure you enjoy your last sleep well I guess as well with you like for you knowing that you did have this album coming out and yeah. you had a newborn did you feel like it was almost a countdown like you had yeah. to, that time was almost going and I know you still yeah. have you know your time with 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 at home and mm. fully doing that mm -hmm. but did you feel like there was kind of a countdown i did a little bit i did because obviously your due date is approaching and you're, mm. it really is i feel like a big countdown but i feel like my whole life has been a countdown if i'm really? honest i feel like my whole career has been a countdown i've been wanting to be an artist from the day i started music it just wasn't the right time and yeah I feel like countdowns exist all around us. So mm. I, I just took it like, I'm just going to do this anyway. I just see it like a big melting pot of creation. Yeah. I don't see it like one has to exist or the other one can't. I'm just like, yeah, let's just let's just go for it and see what happens. I mean, you are someone who just goes and gets, like yeah. we talked about before. But do you yeah. think motherhood has propelled that further? Yes. It's propelled it further because now I simply don't have time. Yeah. I have maybe two hours. I have windows. Everyone knows, every mother knows about the windows. Mm -hmm. You have a window, <laughs> a crucial window <laughs> when your child is asleep. You better do what you need to do in this window. <laughs> if you take your time, if you start scrolling on Instagram or doing some no. crap, you've wasted your window. Babe. Yeah. So you have to use the time well. Mm -hmm. So now it's made me even more like, okay, I've got two hours. Like the other day I had to finish master mixing a song. 
I had two hours to do it, which was taking me the whole day. Yeah. I got in that studio, I got it done. So now I'm even more, I feel like, ambitious and more um, aware of my time. And I respect my time so much more than I did before, my free time. Um, that's why if I am doing something with my career, it means more now because I've yeah. had such a little time to do that. Um, and I thank my son for that because he definitely has shaved down my three hours. That's very true. Although you have <laughs> tried in the past to juggle with a newborn and being in the studio. Oh, I have. <laughs> There's a video online of me actually doing it. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's so funny as well. Cause I don't know if you know Fred again. He's a really good friend of mine, amazing artist. But he came over to meet the baby the other day and we were in the studio making music for his new album, actually. And the baby is all over the song. <laughs> like really? My son is actually going, ah, ah, ah. it's so funny. I'm going to post it. But I mean, you just have to make it work, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. What else are you going to do? There is no other option. There's no other option, especially as the mum. Yeah. One thing my mum always said to me, right, and it's not a negative, she saw it as a positive. She said, when you're a mother, you are you have to realise, in fact, when you're a woman, you have to realise that you are the mother. It doesn't matter what happens, it doesn't matter how many partners are around you or how much family you have around you, it falls on you at yeah. the end of the day. It will always fall on you. And I've really, really felt that. Not that I don't have help. I have so much support from everyone around me. But I definitely feel like I am his mum. Mm. Like I am, I'm probably the most important right now thing to him because I provide him with the milk and I provide him with that comfort. When yeah. no one else can get him to stop crying, for example, he'll be on me for two seconds and he'll stop. Yeah. So you definitely feel that pressure and that importance. And my mum always said that to me. She mm. said you're going to realise that how important it is being a mother. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I just think this juggle that you're doing right now is absolutely <coughs> incredible. No, but also you're mm -hmm. you're it's like it's like a birth of yourself, you know. Yeah. A, as a mother, as this art as as an artist, you know, yeah. in a different way. Yeah. Um it's uh, it's absolutely incredible. Thank you. I don't know how I'm doing it. I how really much really sleep don't. are you getting? Because that's that's mm -hmm. the key. For me, it's not the sleep. It's how much, like, straight sleep. Yeah. It's the broken sleep for me. It kills me. Mm. Like, I can get chunks of... He does sleep, like, okay, so he'll go down at bedtime 7, he'll wake up at 11. Yeah. Then he'll do 11 till 3. Mm -hmm. Then he'll do 3 till 6. Right. So that's I'm getting good. decent yeah, yeah, chunks. Yeah. He's only four months yeah. old. I'm getting decent chunks, but it's just when he wakes up, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was just in the middle of that dream. Oh. And you're just feeling like you're getting good sleep. So I'm sleeping, but I'm also not sleeping. Yeah. Some nights as well, he just won't settle. And lately, he's been trying to have chats. <laughs> <laughs> 3 a.m. He wants to chat. I'm like, I'm like, babe. He'll be like, <laughs> I'm like, is Tommy over it now as well? Is Tommy just fast asleep? Tommy, no, Tommy. One thing I say about him, he is up with me Still in the trenches. No. Oh, shout out Tommy. Yeah, I that's love amazing. you, my husband. He will be up every night with me. And even when I just walk the baby to put the baby back in the cot, he'll jump up with me. <laughs> he does the walk with me. You know that walk when you don't want to wake them up, so you have to yeah. hold them like you have to literally hold your child like it's the most precious thing because you want to wake it up. And then he'll do that walk with me and put the baby in the car. And he's just the best. I really, I really that. have an incredible husband. I do. Oh, my God. He's so amazing. It's a massive life shift. Yeah, it and is. And I feel like I'm, I feel like the people in your life, unless they're going through exactly the same mm, thing in that moment, mm, you know, you forget. You do. You know, when you're out of that zone or if you're not in it at all, yeah. you've never been in it. It's a, yeah. it's a very different it way is. of life. I do miss, though, like that kind of... I felt like a queen when I was pregnant. And oh, now I feel yeah. like... Tommy doesn't treat me that so much, so much like a queen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember I just, even going down the stairs, he'd be like, be careful. And he'd like <laughs> massage my back as I walked down the stairs. And now he's like, see you up there. I'm just like, <laughs> where's, where's, my, where's my back row? We were sat on the sofa the other day, right? Oh. I was sat down and Tom came and sat down. I think he brought, he came just like, the, when the kids are asleep, so mm. he was off on the sofa. And uh, he just sat down and went, oh, can you get me a glass of water? And I called myself and I was like, oh, no, I can do that, can't I? I'm not pregnant. He was like, did you forget for a minute that you're not pregnant? And I was but like, I feel like oh. they should just do that for us anyway. 
Yeah. I feel like they should treat us like we're pregnant all the time. That would be nice. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, to you, we have had a very long summer holidays. And I think oh, wow. every second we've had a child going, Mummy, Daddy. Oh my God. And oh they've started God. this thing where they go, I need help. I need you. I need you. Because they know that if they just say what they want, we will be like, you can do it or you whatever. Say, I, need I need you. you. But in a certain tone cry. of voice. I would yeah. cry. So yeah, they know. So they know cute. how to like tap into the heart. Okay, tell me something. Because we are on the verge of about like trying to start traveling now. So yeah. tell me what the secrets are. How do you travel with a baby on the plane? Don't panic about what anyone else is thinking around you. Uh, always have something like sucky. So I used to breastfeed to take yeah. off landing. Okay. Because um, that really, really helps. Uh, have things that will keep them entertained, like a new toy or something they've yeah. never seen before. Um, yeah, and just go with it. Don't have expectations before you get on that flight. Because okay. I had, before getting on the flight, I think I just watched a segment on this morning where there was an angry lady saying about how children shouldn't be allowed on planes and babies shouldn't be allowed. So I went on with that kind of energy of kind of being like, oh, everyone's against me. But actually, they're not. I can't stand those people. I know. But also I sometimes just think, well, it's TV or it's column inches that people need to fill. If anyone came to me with that energy, I'm warning anyone on any plane, <laughs> I can, if you come to me with that energy about my baby, I swear, because you do not understand. We're scared enough as it is. We don't need mm. you coming with your bad vibes about yeah. us being on the plane with a baby. And what are we actually meant to do? Not ever travel? Like, mm -hmm. what do you want us to do? It's and ridiculous. It's also, okay, question. When you yeah. get to the destination, what do you do about travel? Like, with the baby seat and stuff? Well... We always took a baby seat with us, so we just packed like a maxi cozy because right. you can just strap it straight in. Where we used to put in the isofixes in our That's what I was like. What do you do without the isofix? You don't need it. But you can actually most most car oh. seats. Well, some car seats you can put in with um, a seat belt. So the maxi cozies always that we had oh. always you could do like that. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's how we used to travel. That's good. And to know. there'll be an attachment that you can put it on the pram. Um, Which makes see, she's easy. a pro. She's yeah. a pro. I need to. <laughs> Are you really testing you me? I'm run like, a class. Okay, this is you I'm should doing. run a class. I am so in awe. I'm like, how do you travel with a baby? I'm going to do it. Just think, just do it because it's nice memories for you guys. I know. I don't need to get too big. I heard it's actually easier when they're smaller as Absolutely, well. Absolutely. They're, they're not sleep. on the move on the plane. Yeah. Oh my God, when they're on the move, what do you mm. do? Do you have to walk just up, and down, walk the up and down the aisles? Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, poor mums, man. I know. Hope the SUS will give them a nice little snack or something. I remember the days <laughs> when I'd be all cute on the plane, like, I'm just with Bay. We're just going to New York. Just us two. <laughs> and now I'm going to have to really rethink that. But I mean, it'll be it's a new era. It's that you're getting on the plane to other people going, oh. I just think this is so mean. If you're going to have that annoyance as well, at least hide it. Do you know I what know, I mean? I know. <sighs> Absolutely. Anyway. How do you think motherhood <clears throat> has changed you? Do you think it has? Yeah, it's definitely made me... It's made me, I would say, completely let go of any selfishness I had. Um, and I, I'm not a selfish person, but I'm definitely selfish, I think, sometimes with like my time. Right. Um, I like all my time to be spent doing something I want to do. And I mean, as much as I love my baby, I don't always want to be up at 3 a.m. Yeah. feeding my baby. I don't always want to be up at this time doing this. Or I would love to be in the studio sometimes and I just simply cannot do it. Or, yeah. So it's made, me, it's made me understand how important it is that there is now someone on this earth who needs you. Mm. And I love that. I love how much it's changed me for the better and Tommy. Whereas now, you know... All we think about is him. If I'm mean, even now today, I'm doing interviews and I'm just th sitting there thinking, I hope he's okay and yeah. it's Tommy all right. And I, I just love how much I've changed for the better. He's just made me a better person for sure. I love that. Yeah. If you could write a letter on motherhood, who would it be to? And what would you say? Oh my god. Well, we kind of touched on it already. It would definitely be to my younger self, and I would say, do not listen to anyone, and you will be fine. Because I think there is more negative about pregnancy than positive, mm -hmm. and I hate that. And actually, it's a beautiful time, and it goes so fast. Yeah. It goes so fast. So I'd say to my younger self, and I mean a year younger when I was pregnant, I'd be like, just please don't listen to anyone, and don't go online too much, because TikTok kind of shook me out. I mean... Did it? Yeah, there was just so much negative stuff on there about this and that. 
I wish I didn't. I don't wish I didn't watch as much TikTok when I was pregnant. See, I don't. I'm not really a TikToker, so mm. I, I'm mostly Instagram. And I guess with Instagram, you can largely curate yeah. your feed a bit more. Yeah. Whereas if you're following things on TikTok, oh my god, maybe you think different things. The minute you out. watch one pregnancy thing on TikTok, a million will come. Right. And I think what I saw was so much. Um, I didn't see enough realness. I saw so much like here's the morning in my life with my newborn and she'd wake up and go make like a iced coffee and <laughs> then her baby would be there and everything would be perfect and I'd be like and that wasn't how it felt for me when yeah. I had the baby I was tired and I wasn't making iced coffee I didn't have time to make an iced coffee I didn't have time to brush my own hair she like, said on TikTok she said, I would be <laughs> where is the woman that said I'd be making iced coffee it just didn't go like that so I wish I didn't watch all of that stuff did it scare you then when it wasn't as you'd seen it? Yeah, it made me feel like, oh my God, I'm, am I doing a good job? Um, is everything going okay? The one good thing I did watch a lot of on YouTube through my hypnobirthing lady, shout out Jade, <laughs> was lots of birth videos. Right. Positive, positive hypnobirthing birth videos. And you can watch them on YouTube, there's millions of them. Mm -hmm. And they definitely calmed me and let me see how to breathe. And you'd see these women just going, Phew. And the baby would just slip and out. And they'd look so strong. So strong. So peaceful. So peaceful. <laughs> Which actually was me. Towards the end, I can't believe I did that. I forgot to say, when I pushed him out at the end, because Tommy was like, the head's coming, the head's coming out. I was like, okay, okay, it's go time. I literally just went like this. <laughs> and I did that for about three minutes. I did. I didn't scream. I thought I'd be literally screaming down the place like a crazy lady. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're meant to scream and make yeah. loads of noise. But I mean, I actually was really quiet. So I'm quite impressed with that. I was like, I was a boss. <laughs> I'll boss that, bro. I'm ready to do it again. No, I'm not ready to do it again. I would love you to complete three sentences. The first one is being a mum means. Being a mum means finding the best part of your heart and watching it grow. I love that. Yeah. Um, since having a child, I... Since having a child, I no longer give a fuck. <laughs> I love that! The fucks are gone. <laughs> if anyone upsets me, I'm like, bye. I just have not got time. Yeah. I have no fucks left to give. Yeah. Absolutely none. I've run so low on fucks now. <laughs> We are mothers. Do you understand how hard this is? You don't even know. We haven't got time to be stressed with you. We've got enough stuff at home to be dealing with. I ain't got no fucks to give, girl. Listen. <laughs> I, I just absolutely love that because We're that is so completely not only right. Absolutely. We're so tired. We're so tired. We're so tired. <laughs> <laughs> and finally... <clears throat> I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy when. I'm happy when my baby is asleep. Yeah. I am happy. Watching him sleep is a beautiful thing. He looks like he transforms into this little angel when he sleeps. <laughs> I don't know what babies do. Suddenly he looks like a cherubim or seraphim with little, mm -hmm. like a valentine. You know the ones at Valentine's Day that come out with their little hearts? <laughs> yeah. He turns into one of those when he's sleeping. And I look at him like, God, you're so beautiful. You know that that never goes. Really? Like when I go in at night time and I kiss my nine year old, my seven year old, oh. my five year old, I'm still like, oh my gosh, you little angel. Oh my mm. God, that's so cute. <laughs> I love when he sleeps. And then also, that's our time for like ordering on delivery, what we're going to eat. It's a beautiful <laughs> time. We get into our we get into our zone then when he's sleeping. That's a nice Do you time. try and go to sleep before 11, by the way, before he wakes up again? Or we do. You do it's a new thing. We weren't. But mm. now me and Tommy have been doing a little nap. So from nine to 11, so we stuff down our delivery, whatever we've made. And then we have a little short nap. Yeah. And that nap is beautiful. I love a little cheeky nap. Do you nap. do that? Yeah, I love a cheeky nap. That's been new this like mm. last few weeks. It's been a vibe. When I put the kids to bed, because uh, they'd like us to stay in their room. Uh, so oh. I, if I get to close my eyes for 10 minutes, that's the best nap ever. Oh, my God. Mm. And then when do you wake up next, would you say? Oh, so if they're, if they're going to bed, um, I'll, they'll, they'll be asleep by eight, say. So I usually wake up and I'm like, oh, they're asleep, I should, I should leave. <laughs> yeah. and, and then I go and get on with some work. Oh my God. But I feel energised. But then when do they next wake up? Right oh, no, the mine are not until morning now. Mine are big. Yeah. Oh my God, mine wake up now 
and they'll go downstairs and make themselves breakfast. Oh, my. Sunny days are ahead. They I make don't... their own breakfast. Make... Yeah, I'm... I mean, they haven't made me any yet, but they make themselves breakfast. That is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, wow, I can't wait till that day. Imagine my son going downstairs and making breakfast. <laughs> Yeah. They're learning how to make coffees. My oh kids my now are gosh. making dinner with me, like chopping up veg and things. That's, it's incredible. You are impressive. Well, they are. That's incredible. Wow. Shout out you for that. <laughs> I need to. No, seriously. <laughs> this mothering stuff, guys, it's not, it's, <laughs> it's not easy. When you hear a mum saying like that, I'm like, no, nah, you are the real MVP. <laughs> Did you just hear what she said? That's incredible. <laughs> That's in- Wow. <laughs> Wow. You should run a class, though, for real. Oh, I, 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 my whole thing is just do whatever works for you. You should, do an, I mean. you should do an app. Oh, bless you. You should do an app with all this stuff and just give us a fact every week. that we <laughs> Give us a tip. I'm, I've learned so much I've learned more on here than my own bloody pregnancy. Oh, my God. Thank you for the cool. tips. Thank you so much. It's been oh. an absolute joy to chat to you. Thank you. And I mean, I'm off to listen to K1, and it's going to oh. be on repeat, because what I've heard already, I absolutely love. Thank you. It means so much. It's literally just been me at home doing this, like, more than ever. I really appreciate hearing what you people think about it, because it's not like normally where I've been, like, in a room with a bunch of people, and we all know it's good. It's just literally been me. Yeah. So I'm really, really, really scared. So I hope you, I hope you love it. I really do. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.